Well, the Prime Minister today unveiled the government's new tax plan after dumping the much-promised Stage 3 tax cuts in favour of directed assistance for low- and middle-income earners. The first element of our plan reduces the lowest rate of income tax from 19 cents in the dollar down to 16 cents. This change means that taxpayers earning less than $45,000 will now receive a tax cut. The second tax rate will be cut from 32.5% down to 30%. And that will apply all the way up to $135,000. We will be retaining the 37% rate, but that will now apply from $135,000, an increase up from the current position of $120,000. The threshold for the top tax rate of 45% will also be increased. It will now kick in at $190,000, up from $180,000. I note, that this is the first increase in the threshold for the top marginal tax rate since 2008. Now, the impact of all of that is a small saving for the budget this year, but in the next four years, the impact is going to be neutral. But over 10 years, because bracket creep eventually gets more tax from higher income earners, it will add $28 billion to the budget. Remember, these tax cuts originally were expected to cost $363 billion over 10 years. Now, what's clear is the Treasury and the Treasurer were highly concerned whether these changes would add to inflation and, therefore, the pressure on interest rates. Just like our other measures assisting people with the cost of living, our tax cuts will not add to inflation. The Treasury Secretary and the Treasurer have both consulted the Governor of the Reserve Bank on our changes, who expects that there are no implications for the RBA's inflation forecasts. Now, the other big question for Australia is whether our tax system is becoming uncompetitive with the rest of the world. Will these changes force some smart Australians to leave, or will it in fact be a disincentive for clever talent to come here to Australia? So, how do those changes leave Australia from that competitive point of view? John Humphreys is the Chief Economist of the Australian Taxpayers Association, which advocated for no change to these Stage 3 tax cuts. Why did you advocate no change to the tax cuts? G'day, Ross. We advocated uh, going further than that, actually. We have claimed for a long time, and this is true, bracket creep has been much bigger than the Stage 3 tax cuts compensated us for. So, Stage 3 was a good start, but it was only a start. If we want to address bracket creep, we actually needed a stage four and perhaps a stage five. We needed to go further, certainly not wind them back. Does a now, government that actually wants more revenue want to address bracket creep? That's a big issue here. It is. And whose money ultimately is it? Is it theirs or is it ours? Yes, well, of course, the obvious solution to bracket creep would be to index tax brackets. This is often repeated and it's often quickly dismissed, unfortunately, by politicians who would prefer that sneaky tax increase that they get every year. Now, bracket creep pushes people into higher tax brackets, as you know, gets them paying more tax. Our taxes are growing at about $10 billion a year more than they should if our tax system was holding constant. $10 billion a year of a secret tax increase. And Stage 3 was a good step to give us some of it back, but we actually need more. Which is why, can I say, the proposal by Albanese and the Labor government to drop the, top, the bottom marginal tax rate from 19 to 16, that's actually not a bad idea, but that should be part of the next round of tax cuts. They should not use that to replace the last round. Yes, so we're seeing here the income taxes and what Labor basically said that they would commit to. And the one piece of tax reform that the Morrison government did was to get rid of 37 cents in the dollar, which now Labor is bringing back in. My sense was by flattening your tax scale, you give greater incentive to people to work, to get a second job, to start a business. You take away an incentive to actually avoid tax. All of those things were, were done, but they have not done that this year. Yeah, absolutely. As, we long, as we've long said, the last 20 years has seen nearly no meaningful uh, economic reform, microeconomic reform. The one exception was the stage three tax cuts and especially getting rid of that 37% bracket. So that was a, a great idea. It would have actually incentivised more investment, more risk-taking. If you want more investment and you want more risk-taking, then you need to create a, a better reward for the investment, a better reward for the risk-taking. And that's what lower marginal rates do for people between 100 and 200. And that's what we've taken away here, which is going to basically gut the uh, effectiveness of the productivity gains 
from uh, stage three. But talk about productivity. You want your smartest and brightest to stay in Australia. So you need a competitive tax system here. You also want to attract more people to Australia. The problem is if this government takes away more tax than other countries do, guess what? That talent goes to America. That talent goes to Europe because they can get better incentives. Is that true? Absolutely. And the important thing to note is the marginal tax rates. We get very easily caught up in the game of how much tax cut did you get, how much did I get? And that's that, that's relevant. By the way, I benefit from Labor's changes. But the, what matters as an economist, if you want productivity, what matters is the marginal rates. OK, so I, I put this together today. Here's Australia. I just threw a few of the lower tax rates out there. Brazil, top marginal tax rate, 27.5%. Canada, 33%. You pay some local taxes. Singapore, 24%. Sweden, 20%. Why wouldn't you go and set up a business in Sweden or Singapore, for goodness sakes? When you think about that, you can keep more of the money yourself. Absolutely. There's a bunch of ways people respond to tax, and this is the thing that's often missed in this discussion of what did you get, what did I get. There's lots of ways. You could change jurisdictions, as you say. You could uh, change the amount you save or invest, change the risks you take, change how much work you do. Uh, depending on how much you get to take home is going to impact whether you want to do the overtime, do the harder job.